What we were discussing is we've got 2009 numbers. What are the 2012 numbers looking like in terms of how well the Namibian mining sector yes. is doing? Thank you very much uh, once again uh, for allowing me to uh, uh, appear on the show. Well, yes, I was saying that the, the mining industry is a major player in the Namibian mining, Namibian economy. We are the largest contributor to the GDP. Uh, we, we are the largest contributor to the uh, foreign exchange earnings. And uh, yes, uh, with a global financial meltdown in 2008, towards the end of 2008, 2009 was ended up being a very bad year for us because uh, we suffered the full consequences of that. Um, in terms of the minerals that we produce, um, uh, diamonds uh, have been the backbone of the industry for uh, over 100 years. Obviously, in the few uh, years with the resurgence of uh, uranium uh, uh, industry, we have seen that the uranium industry has now superseded uh, the, uh, the, 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 the diamond industry in terms of contribution to the economy, which is phenomenal. Obviously, with the uh, global financial meltdown, we suffered the consequences of that. The industry went, went down in terms of performance. I think last year we, we've come back and uh, uh, we are doing much, much better than in 2009 and 2010. One of the things that, that this conference is going to be looking at, the theme is challenges and opportunities in the mining sector in Namibia. One of the things that, that, that this um, conference is going to be looking at is some of the challenges uh, that the Namibian mining sector are facing, things like power supply and the water resource. How is Namibia dealing with those particular challenges? We, we've had... Uh uh, the mining conference, uh, which was scheduled for 23rd um, uh, May, that was yesterday, and that was a full day, and I believe we had a, a very successful mining uh, conference. We had uh, uh, over 170 participants. Uh, we had a, the whole venue full. Um, I think we addressed uh, the issues that are, are currently uh, facing the industry, and that's why the theme of the uh, conference was uh, challenges and uh, opportunities in, in the sector. Uh, when it comes to challenges, particularly, yes, uh, power is a, is a critical factor, and I think uh, we've been forewarned by our own national utility, Nampower, that uh, crunch time has come. Uh, we've got to brace ourselves for that. But however, I think we are comforted by the fact that uh, I think Nampower is doing everything it, uh, possible in their power to, uh, to, to get the, the, the power uninterrupted supply of power uh, to the mines. Uh, we are working very closely with them. We had the Nampower MD giving a presentation to us. Uh, that is with, with power. But however, there is also uh, more challenges. Water is one of them. We had a discussion over that. The MD of um, Nam Water, again, our national utility, uh, was there. And uh, we, we are, I think, working together with them to ensure we cooperate because we've got to conserve in the first place, uh, the resources that we are using in order for us to operate. And this is uh, uh, how we are doing things here. Uh, other challenges, obviously, uh, uh, skills is a major challenge. Uh, we discussed that. And then on, on top of that, we've got another challenge of the safety issues, which we had a big discussion yesterday uh, because of the, uh, the safety issues we've, uh, we've had. Uh, we've suffered four fatalities uh, uh, this year, which is very regrettable. We suffered three fatalities, and as an industry, we want our motto is to uh, to operate without facility, fatalities. We should be, we want all our employees to go to work, and be able to come back to their families uh, uh, without any fatalities, without any incident, come back to their beloved ones. Vestin, let's talk a little bit about, about ownership and partnership. This has been an issue in, in some African countries when it comes to ownership of mines. You've got the NABDA, NAMDEB model where it's a joint venture between De Beers and the government of Namibia. Are the, this kind of model, do you see it you know, per, perhaps becoming a trend in terms of, of um, growing the, the mining sector in Namibia? Well, uh, in terms of uh, government ownership, um, um, 
the NAMDEP model is obviously a very unique, a very special one. Uh, it's, coming, it's coming under special circumstances. Um, I think the ownership that um, the government is now pursuing, uh, as you are aware, government has established a government mining uh, company called Epangelo. And the government is seeking to have uh, more participation uh, in the mining industry. Um, uh, I think in terms of uh, the kind of shareholding that you're talking, um, government is looking at uh, basically buying into uh, either the existing um, uh, mines uh, or indeed into the future uh, projects, uh, which uh, uh, I think in, according, in accordance with our laws, um, government has assured us that um, the existing rights will, will not be affected with that empowerment. So essentially it's an empowerment which basically respects the, uh, the, the laws of the country. Um, uh, so it's, a, it's something that which is uh, um, under discussion, it's something which is uh, under implementation, uh, but I think the laws are, are very clear, those that have been passed, uh, and obviously we are still waiting for new laws uh, which will basically implement the new uh, policy decisions that were announced last year. Weston, let's talk a little bit about uranium. You did speak about it, and, and one of the trends that we have seen, and you also mentioned it, is that non-diamond mining has been outperforming diamond mining in the country. What is the future of uranium, just in terms of exploration, and also how you plan yeah. to grow that particular, in terms of business in that sector? Yes, thank you. The, uh, the uranium industry certainly is a major uh, player now. Uranium has taken uh, center, uh, a center stage, as it were, and diamonds have taken the back seat. Um, uh, when we had the uranium uh, spot price um, 2007 uh, reaching 137 US dollar per, uh, per pound, we, we experienced a surge of uh, exploration interest in the country, which is very good for us, uh, and I think that was very healthy. Uh, obviously, lots of projects have um, have have been pursued. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, drilling. Uh, the right now, we've been talking of a couple of mines that are actually on the horizon. Uh, bankable feasibility studies have been done. Um, we've been in the last um, four years or so. Um, uh, commanding the last three years uh, before last year, commanding as the as the fourth largest uh, producer of uh, uranium oxide. Uh, last year we slipped down to a fifth position, and Niger, Niger has taken over that. Uh, but however, we believe that um, I think uh, uranium um, is going to be a major, major player, uh, and for one reason, uh, we've got the. There are currently two uh, uh, uranium mines, uh, Rossing and Lang Heinrich, and uh, there is one under construction by Areva. Uh, and then uh, I think last year we ended the year very positively with the Minister of Mines granting a 25 year mining license to a new uranium uh, project, which is Husa project. And uh, construction is, uh, we, uh, is geared to start, commence this year. Now, just to give, put things in perspective, this particular one, this particular uh, mine, uh, once in, in production, somewhere around 2014, according to their plans, you are talking of this will be the third largest uranium mine in the world. And we believe Namibia uh, will reclaim not just the fourth uh, position, we believe we shall move upward to the third position as the third largest uh, producer of uranium in the world. Interesting developments happening there in Namibia's mining sector. Thank you so much for joining us. That was Vestin Malango, he's CEO of the country's Chamber of Mines.